All right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, hello, it's Mr. G again. We are going to continue with our Photopia tutorial here today. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about our layers panel right over here. So this is our layers panel, okay? Let's go ahead and review everything we did yesterday that we have our main work area here. That's where our image is at, okay? We have our zoom tool and we can zoom in and out of that. We hit command zero or fit area to make it go back in here. Here is our toolbar where we can grab all of our tools. If we hover over any one tool, it will tell us what it is and if there's a quick key for that. And then as we grab a tool, you'll see that we have an options panel right up here to tell options for whatever tool is in our hand from the toolbar. And then we have the main menu up here. Okay, so that's where we left off last time. Okay, and we had brought in our astronaut we opened that we downloaded it from our google classroom and then we opened it right here into photopia and then we opened and we placed this picture of this african elephant here over here and we had it pop up in our layers panel okay so let's go ahead and do a few things just to get started i want you to go up here and if you haven't already selected your move tool select the keyboard shortcut v or click your move tool from your toolbar okay now right up here you've got a couple options okay i want to make sure that you have these selected okay up here it has a selection to check auto select and what that does it will i can't click on it see i can't change to it but if i have that i can just automatically click and it will switch back and forth to which element i am clicking so you see i can click the astronaut here and now the astronaut is selected here and if i click the elephant now the elephant is selected here and you can tell that it's highlighted, okay? So that's what auto select does there. And then second thing, transform controls. Make sure you have these transform controls, okay? And what those are, are these little boxes that are on the corners of your element, okay? And what those do, transformations is what Photopia and Photo Photoshop are what they call when you change something. So if I change it in the way of size or proportion or rotation, it's called a transformation, okay? So those controls help me to quickly grab and move things, okay? So the last, so we make sure we're gonna have our auto select and auto transform controls already there and we're gonna leave distances unchecked, okay? All right. Now I also have a few other options up here and those are to align and those are fun if we're doing with shapes, but we won't get into those quite today. Okay. So over here on our layers panel, first thing I want to do, we placed our elephant and what we, when we place our elephant, it will always place objects as smart objects. Okay. And that is a whole nother lesson. We'll get into that another day. So today we're just going to just talk about the layers panel. So I want you to click and right click on that African bush elephant panel there in your layers panel. And I want you to go down about halfway down, it says rasterize, okay? And I want you to watch the, the little thumbnail of the picture when you hit rasterize, it'll change it right there, okay? So now it doesn't have a little box to notate that it's a smart object, okay? So we talked about our layers panel that we get a layer for different things, okay? And when we have our move tool, I can go and I can move things around, okay? Now you'll notice here that I've got my African elephant is above the background layer, okay? And I can shift those around. If I click the African elephant, I drag it underneath. You'll see that now it's still there, but it's underneath this background layer, okay? Then I can take the background layer and I can drag it down and switch them and now it's back underneath, okay? So think of it, layers are like uh, like a sandwich where the bottom layer right here, your background layer is like your bottom of your bread. And then on top of that, we're gonna put our lettuce and then on top of that, we're gonna put our tomato. And then on top of that, we're gonna put our pickle. And then we're on top of that, we're gonna put our cheese and whatever else you're gonna put on. But whatever is on the bottom is gonna be hidden by whatever is going on top, okay? So it's very uh, essential that you understand how layers work. So that's why we're talking about that today, okay? Now, some other things over here on our layer panel that we notice, okay? We have these little eyeballs here, okay? So if I poke one of those eyeballs, I can't see the elephant anymore. So it does kind of what you think it would do. So if I poke out the eyeball, that image disappears. If I poke out the eyeball, then the elephant goes away, okay? And why we, and we poke them all out, 
everything goes away. So, but I still have my work area here, right? So my work area is still here. And you'll notice all the way back and we zoom in, it has these little black and these little gray and white little check boxes back here, okay? That's Photoshop's way of telling you there is nothing there, okay? You'll get little warnings that'll say that, you know, you might have a selection, there's nothing in the selection. When you get pop-up warnings, make sure you read them because the program's trying to tell you something, okay? So when you see this black or this gray and white grid, there is nothing there. That is empty nothingness, all void, nihilism, okay? So let's go ahead and poke our eyeballs back on here, okay? So we talked about poking the eyeballs out. We can rearrange layers. We can also rename layers, okay? So this is called background layers. So sometimes we'll have images and you'll have tons of tons of layers, okay? So if I have something here and I need to rename it, I can just double click on that word and you'll see it gets highlighted and now I can rename it. So let's name that astronaut. So she now has a layer name. Okay, so there's my astronaut. She's right there. There's my elephant right there. Okay, so other things we can do with our layers. Okay, I'm going to move my elephant back over here. Get my move tool. Okay, I can duplicate layers. Okay, so again, I can go down here and I have some controls here. Okay, so right down here, I can link layers. I can do a layer style. I can do adjustment layers. I can do masks. I can have a folder. Or I can have a new layer. And I can also throw layers away, okay? So let's go ahead and first we are going to right click our layer and let's click duplicate layer, okay? And that is going to do what you think it's going to do, okay? So I've got my layer here and I've got one called African Elephant, and I've got one called African Elephant Copy, okay? So if I double click that, I can change that, and we can just change that to Elephant 2. You can rename that. And let's rename this one to Elephant 1. Okay, let's go ahead, and what we're going to do we're now we're going to lock a layer, okay? So it looks like I don't have any. I've got, it doesn't look like I've got two, but if you actually get your move tool, you'll see there are two, okay? So let's go ahead and I am going to go to elephant one, okay? If you're not sure which one it is, you can always poke that eye out and it'll help you just identify which one it is, okay? You see, I've got it selected. It's got the little window highlighted here and it's a little darker to show that you've selected that layer, okay? So I'm gonna select that elephant one and I'm going to go right up here to this little padlock and I'm gonna click lock that layer, okay? Now what that does, you'll see I can't grab it anymore like I could before. I go to elephant two, I can move it away. But the lock layer, what it does, it does exactly what you think it's gonna do. It's gonna lock that layer down so that I can't affect it. Okay, so we got one layer locked, okay? Let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and move him over here. Let's move our astronaut back over here. We pushed her out of the scene there a little bit. Okay, let's go to our unlocked elephant here. And I want you to go and we're going to using our move tools, we are going to resize that. Okay, we're going to do a transformation. Remember, we click those transformation controls right up here. Go ahead and you are going to click and you are going to drag. Okay, now you'll see that it distorts the image. Okay, when I click and drag. Okay, if you want to maintain the proportions of your image, you hold down the shift key. And now my image will not distort. So I'm going to just hold down shift and I'm gonna make a tiny elephant. And I'm gonna put it in the center right there. And then I am going to duplicate that layer. And we're gonna call that tiny elephant. So I've got my original elephant 
which is locked. I've got elephant two and I've got tiny elephant. And let's take tiny elephant and let's make it really tiny and put it right there. Okay. Now the last thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and make these elephants. We're going to put them all into a folder so that they make sense. Okay. So it's just a matter of arranging this. So we are going to click our tiny elephant. We're going to hold down shift. We're going to click elephant two. And then we're going to click elephant three. Okay. Now that we've got them all selected, you can see they're all select highlighted. We're going to go down here to the folder option and we're just going to click new folder. Now that's going to put all of those guys into a folder. Okay. So you'll see now that I can click all of them off all together. I can hit that little arrow next to there and now all of those elephants are in there. Okay. So that's a few things that we can do with our layers panel. Okay. Now one more thing before we go and do anything else. Okay. Uh, the best thing about digital art is you can undo anything that you do. Okay. So if I'm painting or drawing and I make a big old mistake, I spill my paint onto my canvas or I'm making a drawing and I mess the eye up, I've got to either erase it or start over or make some kind of correction and it's time consuming. But in digital art, I can do all kinds of things. Okay. So let's take our tiny elephant say here. Okay. Let's go ahead and we'll duplicate that and we'll drag it down here. And let's rotate it. I didn't talk about rotation. Not only can we resize elements, we can also rotate it. So when I hang out over the side, you'll see that my cursor changes from an arrow to a curved arrow. And I can rotate my guy all around 360 degrees. If you hold down your shift key, it will rotate at regular angles. So if I want it exactly 90 degrees upside down, I can do that. Okay. But let's say I didn't want to do that. I'm like, oh no, Mr. G, I did something I didn't mean to do. What do you do? You can undo. So up here under edit, there is undo. And I hit undo and it undoes it. Okay. So I go back up here and I go redo and it redoes it. Okay. Which is awesome. Now you go here and you see that you have a step forward and step backward. Okay. So the quick key to undo anything is command Z. Okay. Notated right there. Step backwards, command Z. And the go forward is command shift Z. The little arrow is shift command. If you're on a Mac, it is the shift plus control uh, in Z or rather on a Windows or a Google uh, Chromebook. So if I step forward, it's going to redo that. So again, that's command Z to undo and command shift Z to redo it. Okay. Now the last thing we're going to look at over here is your history panel. Okay. It does the same thing as that command edit, redo and step forward and step backward does. Okay. Where it goes right over here. So I can go back to move. I can go back to duplicate. I can go back to group layers. I can go back to free transform. I can go back to move. Okay. So it goes one step back and you can actually scroll through here all the way. You got a little scroll bar over here that you can scroll all the way down and we can go all the way back to where we opened this file when you started. So when you're doing this program, it takes a little bit of the anxiety of way that you're going to do something wrong because you can always go backwards to a few steps back to you know where you were at. OK, so that is one of the cool things about digital art. You can undo your mistakes like that. OK, now also I can also go back and redo it. Let's say, let's say I got lost. You know what? I was all good, Rooster G, right up until you duplicated that layer. So I can go right back to duplicate layer and I'll go back to that back forward in time. And then I can go all the way back to the very end. Okay. All right. So we're going to stop there. I want you to go ahead and we're going to do a couple more things right before we leave here. So we're going to do file. And last time when we left, we saved it as a PSD file. We saved it as a Photoshop document. Okay. And then we uploaded it to our Google class or Google drive so we could submit it to a Google classroom. Right. So 
This time we're going to add one more step to that. Every time we're working in Photoshop, we want to save a working copy, which is our Photoshop document. That's going to preserve all of your layers over here. Okay, I waited until this to talk about this because this will preserve all your layers. Okay, when we save it into a submission form, which is going to be in a JPEG form, it's going to save it as a flattened image, okay? JPEGs, regular images like that are on our phone and photographs that we take are generally a flattened image that do not have multiple layers, okay? Photoshop documents, we're working on it. So if we're still working on this document, like we are, like we were last time, we saved it as a working document, as a Photoshop document, okay? So first we're gonna say, save as PSD. So we'll save that PSD document and then we're going to submit it, okay? So we'll upload that to our Google Drive by going to drive and we'll go to new upload and we'll go to new file upload. I'll go to that downloads folder and we're going to look for that astronaut file and you get a little picture. It tells you that there's our one. You might have a, a copy of one from the original one we did. You want the newest one. Okay. So once we have that, we'll say you can open that. So that will load it up to the drive so that when you come to class, you can download it and then work in class. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, going back to Photopia, we also want to turn in a JPEG. So that is the one that you're going to turn in. So we're going to go over here to file and we're going to export as a JPEG. Okay. You see, we have some different options here. PNG JPEGs and SVG files are in GIFs uh, are all different kinds of image files and a PDF is an image file. It's got layers too, but it's a little bit different, usually more for text documents. Um, but we'll go ahead and you're going to export as a JPEG, JPG. Okay. You'll see you have a few options here, your format, you'll have your pixels width, quality. Okay. And then you can save. Okay. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to throw that down here into your file. Okay. So that when I go to Google classroom and I turn that in, I want to make sure that I am turning in show in finder, the one that ends in J P G. Okay. Now you'll notice that your PSD file is also right there. Okay. So you'll see that they're right there and they have PSD JPEGs underneath them. Okay. You want to make sure you turn in the JPEGs. Okay. I can't download and take the time to convert all of your files from Photoshop to JPEG. So it's one part of the digital art and digital file upkeep is that you have to make sure you convert your files and save a working file. Okay. So this is very important. We'll do this for all projects. You'll save one copy for your working copy as a Photoshop document, and then you'll save a second copy as your JPEG as the image file to turn in. Okay. If you have any questions, email me, stay creative, and I will see you soon.